work, and energy. So here are our goals for this session. We'll define the concept of work. We'll compare and contrast work and impulse. And we'll start talking about potential energy. So you're going to see a lot of parallels between what we did with impulse momentum and what we're going to do with work and energy. But there are also important differences. So it's really important to get the idea that this is the same, but what the differences are. OK, so let's go back and we'll compare what we did for impulse. And here's a key difference right here. This is a vector equation, whereas when we get to work and energy, it's scalar. OK, so we've got the net force multiplied by the time, and that gets your change in momentum, also known as the impulse. In other words, the change in momentum is the net force multiplied by the time interval over which the net force acts. It's also the area under the net force versus time graph. Both the impulse is that and the change in momentum. They are synonymous. Okay, so let's go on and talk about this new idea, which is work. In particular, we'll start with the net work, the work done by the net force. Okay, instead of delta P, we have delta K, K being the kinetic energy. So there's a change in kinetic energy produced by a net force. You calculate that as the magnitude of the net force multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement, delta R, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors, the net force and displacement. We call that net work. And a key difference here between the impulse equation and the net work equation is impulse and momentum are vectors, work and energy are scalars. So another way to think about it is the change in kinetic energy, or the network, is the component of the net force acting along the displacement multiplied by the displacement over which the net force acts. And we can also use graphs, but now instead of graphing net force versus time, as we did for momentum and impulse, we're going to graph net force versus position and do the area under the curve of that graph, and that is the network, also known as the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so impulse again is change in momentum. Those are both vectors. Network is change in kinetic energy. Those are both scalars. Work kinetic energy theorem. Delta K is the magnitude of the net force, magnitude of the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. That's the net work. So the uh, sine on the net work comes from really the cosine theta piece of the equation. So, cos theta gives you zero when theta is 90 degrees. In other words, when the net force is perpendicular to the displacement, there is no work being done. The change in kinetic energy, or the net work, can turn out to be positive if the net force has a component in the direction of the displacement. It can be all in the direction of the displacement, but at least if it has a component in the direction of the displacement, that you'll get a positive result. It can also be negative, if there's a component of the net force opposite to the direction of the displacement or if the net force is simply directly opposite to the displacement. But this is really coming from the cosine theta piece of the uh, equation there. And it's all about how the net force compares in direction to the displacement. Okay, so here we talked about the net force versus time graph. We've looked at this. The area under that curve represents the change in momentum, also known as the impulse. So if we flip over to the net force versus position graph, then the area under the curve here represents the change in kinetic energy, also known as the net work. So you really got to pay, pay attention to what is on the horizontal axis. If you get time there, you're probably thinking about momentum and impulse. If you get position, you're thinking about energy and work. Okay, so we can also talk about work done by individual forces, right? So we can use basically the same equation. W equals magnitude of F, magnitude of displacement, cosine the angle between them. But instead of doing the net force as F, we just do an individual force. Then that turns out to be the work done by that single force. 
And of course, the net work done on an object is the sum of the work done by all the individual forces acting on the object. So if you have 10 forces acting, you can apply that equation 10 times, add them all up, and you'll get the same result as you get from the net force, uh, sorry, net work equation. Okay, so let's do this thought example. So you're simply holding an object. It weighs 10 newtons, that's about a kilogram, so it maybe is a one liter bottle of water you're holding. How much work do you do in the object? Remember, this thing is at rest and stays at rest. So you can feel, you know, you get tired if you hold something heavy for a long time, but under the physics definition of work, because there's no displacement in this case, then the work done is zero, even though you're applying a force. Okay, so let's think about tossing a ball. Okay, so you throw a ball straight up, reaches a maximum height, h, comes back down to where it starts. We'll call that y equals zero, the start and the end. Okay, uh, initial speed is vi. So let's apply our equation, and we'll think about this on the way up. So the only thing acting on the ball on the way up, this is after it leaves your hand, is the force of gravity. So you get our force, mg. We've got delta y is h. And we've got a minus sign coming from the fact that the net force is down and the displacement is up. That equals the final kinetic energy, zero, minus the initial kinetic energy, one-half mvi squared. Okay, so you simplify that, mgh is one-half mvi squared. On the way down, force of gravity now does positive work, and the kinetic energy comes back to its original value. Okay, so on the way up, the energy goes away, the kinetic energy goes away and the kinetic energy comes back again on the way down. Well, where does it come from? The other cool thing is, we've done energy before. This equation you recognize, constant acceleration equation, multiply by one half m, you've got work kinetic energy. Okay, so mgh represents some kind of energy, right? So on the way up, kinetic energy goes into mgh, on the way back, mgh comes out, goes back to kinetic energy, what kind of energy do we call this? We call this gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy is energy associated with motion, potential energy is energy associated with position. And we can talk about the work done by gravity, but more often we use gravitational potential energy. And we'll talk more about that in upcoming videos. The end.